I come here this morning as a very sad man because it's as if we have presidential candidates that don't even understand the severity of the problems. The Debt Management Office yesterday said, whoever will emerge out of the 18 candidates will have a debt burden of 77 trillion. All of them were the campaign trail. Nobody <clears throat> talked about how they will address the debt burden. It is this kind of thing that saddens me about Nigeria then we'll vote in leaders that will take another six months to elect ministers that we all know and will plunge the economy into chaos. I'm a fourth try person, so I'm already looking beyond March and even May 29 because the problems will come. We're campaigning poetry and we govern in prose. We're having the, camp the poetry of campaign now, but when the prose of governance hits us, which leaders are ready? So please, I will advise all the presidential candidates and their campaign surrogates to so please issue statements on how they are going to solve the burden of 77 trillion debts rather than abusing one another. So let me now go to the politics, which I hate talking about because we've heard it one too much. Politicians are hypocrites. If you don't favor them, they abuse you. They call you bias. They are surrogates who even try to teach us journalists our jobs on TV, like we've seen them in the last week do. Now, Bola Tinubu is saying, that Obasanjo is a blind man. This same blind man, he went into a closed door meeting with Inota. He took Nuhu Ribadu, Baba Kande, and all the stick, stick, party stakeholders to go and meet Inota. That's the same blind man, isn't it? The same blind man, the nation newspaper, wrote glowing things about the week after they visited Ota to see him. There's a tape running around. Sometimes we wish we can play these tapes. Where President Muhammadu Buhari was celebrating the endorsement of blind man Olusha Obasanjo in 2015 on CNN. Then, Obasanjo was a national treasure. We all remember how he tore his PDP, or he said he was going to tear his PDP membership. And he supported and endorsed APC then. Then he was not a blind man. Now he's a blind man. Sometimes when politicians speak, <clears throat> I hope Nigerians can read between the lines and ask them the most important problems as regards the debts rather than all the politicking. When I hear words like, uh, we'll turn Yahoo Yahoo boys around, a uh, Yahoo Yahoo boy is not a reflection of the decaying Nigerian economy. It is not a justification for advanced fee fraud. But if we had done better, to help these boys provide enabling environments, are we going to have a proliferation of crime? And we had the blank slate under the APC government to be able to do all of this. But did we do it? No. In all of this, I like what he said. He would turn them to chip makers. Pretty much reminds me of, or it's akin to trying to say you would turn people in areas like Oluwole to detectives. There's a chip war going on. And I will be happy if Nigeria can even be part of the chip war because chips will become the future. So it is time for us to talk more on introspection on development. But give it to him. He pulled out a crowd in Benin. He was able to get that out. A lot of things were said, but he was low on the things he was going to do for Nigeria. And we are not hearing a lot of that in the campaign. The campaigns are just about abusing one another. There are problems on ground, and we should try as much as possible to solve the problem. For Governor Wike and his team, it is obvious that they are in a political coup de sac now. And you can see what happened in the battle. They've plunged Mr. Shehi Makinde into an abyss of uncertainty. Because you see, we forget too much in this country. And Mr. Shehi Makinde forgets that. For his election to happen in 2019, people had to collapse their structures for him. The likes of Lan Lei, the likes of Chief uh, Ayonride, of the SDP, and a couple of three, four parties endorsed him with the big architecture of his political party, the PDP. But like you said, the structure of the PDP, they are having their own parallel rally and all of that. So he's already in a cul-de-sac. And that's why we keep saying when people fight, they should be able to have a termination date to their fights. They should be able to introspect. 
But like I keep saying, they might have a political plan we don't know. On the case of President Buhari joining the campaign train, please, I'd like to ask, what record does President Buhari want to see on the campaign trail when he joins Bola Ahmed Tinubu? What record does he want to campaign on? That's a big pose at this morning. No, it's not about record.